at you with another talk. Yet again, we've got Drago Bosnich. Drago, welcome back. How are you doing? Great to be here as always. Um, good to have you back. It's been a while, but it's not as long as the last time. Last time we took a bit of a longer break. It's almost the weekly, weekly news. Yeah. Almost. Bi weekly or bi monthly. Um, something like that, yeah. We're, we're just like random it's like no schedule yeah. it makes it fun that way nobody knows what to expect um everybody who's new hi welcome uh this is a comedy show nothing here has anything to do with reality um <laughs> now back to uh drago's comedy articles of the week china and crosshairs as u.s deploys a land-based medium range missiles in asia pacific what do the Americans yeah. want in the Asia Pacific? Well, to spread freedom and democracy as per usual. So, <laughs> um, I, I mean, in this case, in all seriousness, uh, what they are doing is they're returning the world to like the 1980s where there was uh, the, the fear of nuclear annihilation destroying the world. And that's exa exactly what they're doing now because they're returning the weapon systems that they they were forced to renounce in the 1980s and 90s uh, after the so-called INF Treaty, which um, eliminated the so-called intermediate range and medium range missiles. So now they're putting these missiles on, on, on these Pacific islands and obviously the target is China. And uh, the thing is these missiles already exist on air launched uh, platforms. I mean, as air, as air launched missiles for, for uh, bombers and airplanes, uh, and also on ships. However, these are land-based systems, which means they will be there forever or for a prolonged period of time. So they will be like on duty all the time. And that's the problem, of course, because it uh, only like escalates tensions. Um, and they're planning to do the same in Europe, where they're going to point them at Russia. And specifically, I talked about um, a system called Typhon, not Typhoon, but literally Typhon which is a Greek uh, mythological creature. Um, and this system actually fires Domokov, which has like up to 2,000 kilometers range. Uh, so it's, it's a pretty uh, serious system and it's going to be land-based and, and also uses the so-called SM-6 missiles, which are multi-role. So um, it's, it's, it's a game changer in the sense that the Chinese will have to deploy their own systems in the region, which creates further tensions, which obviously is very good for the military industrial complex. So whatever is good for them, it's good for America, I guess. So what you're saying is uh, more sales and yeah. uh, some recycling and uh, yeah. combat proven. Is this, is this combat proven, as they like to say? Yeah, we, we could say it's combat proven because they're using missiles which were already used in combat, which is the, the sea-based Tomahawk. But but the, the, the thing is, like, it, this is like a living a life with cheats when it comes to these U.S. congressmen who are actually making these laws. Because these guys have invested uh, loads of money into the military industrial complex, and they're the ones making the decisions if these systems are going to get deployed. So literally, like it's it's living a life with with cheats. So they're the ones making all the decisions. Literally, there there's no one to keep them in check. So it's, it's pretty insane. Um, moving right along, uh, another insane missile story. <laughs> Are these guys for real? Like, wh why, why, why would uh, Armenia want to do this? I, I, you know, the, the thing is, Dave, uh, in the meantime, they have actually denied the reports about sending the Tachkayu missiles to, to to the Kiev regime. However, I'm not sure, like, if this is really going to, you know, happen, if, if the, the decision to uh, send the missiles, if it's true or not. I mean, I'm, I was just quoting reports, very serious reports that this was happening. And to me, it's insane that, that these leaders, so-called leaders of Armenia, have actually betrayed their own people. They've betrayed Artsakh, or as, as it's known, better known as Nagorno-Karabakh. And they didn't use these missiles for some reason against the Azeri military, but they were ready. now they're ready to send it to the Kiev regime, which is insane. So 
they've in the meantime they've denied reports about this which i really really hope is true uh, but if it's if it's really going on if it's really ongoing and if it's really going to happen then i really don't know what to say i, I really hope the armenian people wake up and and put a stop to this because this is this is pure madness um i've given up on the armenian people after what just happened there's uh, not much the hope that lies in the Armenian people as like, you know, controlling their government or overthrowing it or whatever. I don't know. It's a tragedy. Um, yeah. On the other hand, what's not a tragedy is when people buy me a coffee. Thank you for everyone who's bought me a coffee. I love that. Um, fuels the show. You see, I even take sips of your coffee. But no, seriously though, thank you everyone who's a patron and who's bought me a coffee so far. It's much appreciated. It uh, fuels the show, literally and figuratively. Now, uh, moving right along to the famous story of the F-16s. Um, <laughs> I saw this on your feed and I shared it. It's hilarious. Um, what's wrong with the F-16s? They're not good enough well, for Ukraine. Well, they're they're too old. I mean, this is what I've been saying for a couple for a couple of months already. Like people who think they're gonna get the latest version, the the block fifty fifty two or whatever, or set, not to mention the the F sixteen V, the the block seventy seventy two. That's even crazier. Like because not even the U S has a lot of those air, uh, jets. Like people who think they're going to get the latest stuff are, are just crazy, you know, because nobody's going to give them, nobody's going to give the, the Kiev regime the latest stuff because like you risk uh, losing it, you risk uh, fall, this thing falling into the hands of the enemy and so on and so on. So obviously they're, they're going to give them old stuff and that's exactly what's, what's going on. And now the Kiev regime is whining that this old stuff is not going to be very good against, you know, Russian jets. Because it's not even as good as the Soviet jets that they inherited, uh, and they're, they're, that are getting blown out of the sky all sounds the a time. Lot like one of the sounds a lot like one of the talks we had, like I don't know, six months ago or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we we talked about it and we mentioned that this is going to happen, and this is exactly what's happening now. So you know, the the big question is if they're going to get F-16s at, at all, because uh, the the Dutch are probably going to bail. And not going to give them anything, and then others might follow because you know they're not. There's not going to be enough of these F-16s. So the Americans might just say, "Well, okay, if we're, we're going to give you 12 uh, or 15 jets, that means they're going to get blown to bits. So it's better not to give them at all." Just like what happened with the Abrams tanks. So uh, now they're whining that they need 150 of them, and that they also need to be modernized, which I really don't know who's going to do that. Uh, because that's a, a lot more money that you have to invest, and also it's going to take time because you can't modernize jets in two days. You have you, have, you need like months or even years in this case. So um, it's going to delay the the sending of F sixteen. Russian propaganda. Further. Russian propaganda. Yeah, so F sixteen is the best plane in the world. Um, <laughs> also, uh, for those who don't know and who might be here for the first time or may be uh, watching Drago be a guest here. Uh, for the first time hi welcome and also uh, yeah drago writes for bricks uh information portal um and he is a military and geopolitical analyst so here he is doing his geopolitical stuff <laughs> um yeah. is america pushing for artificial uh for an artificial commodities crisis is it yep yeah. Yeah, I mean, we could say that. We could say that whatever the heck they've been doing so far uh, points out to that because uh, they've uh, they've effectively banned the Greeks from transporting Russian oil, which obviously is going to cause the oil to, uh, so to the oil prices to go up a, a lot. And uh, then, like, what's going to happen? Well, it's going to spill over to every other industry which uses oil, uh, which essentially is almost every other industry in the world. Um, and then the, the commodity prices are going to go up even more. And as we, as, we, as we know, they already are high, more than high enough. And a lot of people are going to get affected by this. And the, the obvious result is going to be a commodities crisis, commodities prices uh, crisis. So, uh, you know, the only logical uh, 
conclusion that I can come up with is that they're trying to do this because this decision doesn't make any sense because it's not going to hurt the Russians. The Russians will still have their oil. They will have their commodities that they need. Uh, stuff will be cheap in Russia. Uh, however, everything else is going to be expensive for everyone else in the world. So it's just crazy. Um, sanctions are working. Uh, on the yeah. other hand, my ad block has stopped working. Avid followers of my Telegram channel. By the way, if you're not on Telegram, I don't know why you're not there. Like it's it's like all the other apps, only it's better, and it's like all of them put together, and uh, it's uh, safe, and you can find anything you want on Telegram. So everybody who's like, oh no, Telegram. You you got to get on Telegram. But realistically speaking, I wanted to draw attention to the fact that uh, I'm taking a break from your news, in case you haven't noticed, Drago. Um, I wanted to bring up a meme, but then I re re realized I've got this little story to tell. So um, this is real ad block in Russia from like 2016 from my personal Facebook. Um, <laughs> I don't know what's going on with YouTube. Are you watching this with Adblock? You should be, even though there shouldn't be any ads. Are there any ads? Let me know in the comments below. Any ads on this video? Because um, these are the ads that come up when I... Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> the YouTube ads are trying to tell me something. Um, I'll just leave it at that. Anyway, um, I, no, but really, who are these ads made for? Like... Are these supposed to be children's games? That like uh, Glory and Hero Wars? Is that like uh, a children's game? Is this like morals that you want to be teaching children? I don't know what to say. I was, yeah, it's, uh, it's great. Actually, I think it's great if you want to raise a generation of psychopaths. It's perfect. Basically, yeah. Yeah. On that happy note, let's uh, <laughs> close these ad slides. Oh! we do a meme? Avid followers of my telegram will know this meme. I lost my family. Whatever. Do you condemn Hamas? <laughs> there should be a K there. But, yeah. It's Hamas, not Hamas. Ham well, it's actually Hamas. This is a comedy channel. <laughs> Thank you for your patience with us. <laughs> Uh, Drago, it's good that you're almost like a uh, regular, like a host here. Like, I don't have to pretend to be uh, professional around you. Um, military Schengen. For those that don't know, Schengen is the visa arrangement in Europe where countries that are not even part of the EU, and some that are, and some that are, but aren't part of Schengen, um, it's like a visa-free walk-around thing. Yep. Well, this one is military. NATO wants the same thing for its uh, military forces. Uh, it's all about freedom and democracy and, uh, you know, the mo free movement of people. doesn't matter what those people do. If, they, if they're, you know, there to kill other people, but at least they have the free movement, right? So uh, this is perfectly in line with Western so-called values that they like to, um, you know, talk about that much. Uh, so essentially, this is what I mentioned in the article. They, and, and uh, you know, in a way, this is the fusion of NATO and the EU. For those who think that there are different organizations, I guess uh, that distinction is important. Um, either way, um, NATO and the EU are effectively becoming one, and and we're talking about not just de facto, which is already happening, but like legally speaking, and uh, military Schengen is is effectively what what the. Uh, this is, by the way, a German initiative. They want uh, the free movement of NATO troops across Europe. So, you know, it's interesting. The last time the Germans wanted to, you know, uh, go around Europe freely with their military, it didn't end very well, I guess. <laughs> a German initiative to get NATO vehicles moving around Europe freely, huh? Um, yeah, even the Poles, who, like, as you know, are rapidly Russophobic, are not very happy about this initiative, so... Even the That's Poles are getting World War II vibes, is what you're saying? Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. All I can say, like, it's, no, I better not comment. I was going to bring yeah. up Kosovo and Metohija and the freedom of movement of NATO troops within Serbia, but let's leave that for another, like, lifetime. Um, anyway, 
Russia aircraft for Iran and multipolarity. This is the article that I wanted you to start talking about so that I can play video. Um, yep. Go on. Russian aircraft for Iran. Yeah, the, the Iranians are buying a bunch of Russian aircraft, including like the Su-35 uh, fighter jets, which are some of the best fighter jets ever made. Uh, not just Russian, but like all together, all fighter jets in the world. And uh, the Yak-130 uh, trainers, as well as the Mi-28 uh, attack helicopters. And Are these, uh, are these 35s? Yeah that's, yeah, that's the 35, exactly. And this what is we're footage. seeing... Yeah, I was just going to say that it's footage of the escort of Putin's plane uh, going to the Emirates, I believe, first and then more later. Yeah, so you were saying about the airplane being the best one in the world? Yeah, it this probably is like all around when everything taking is taken into account, the, the price, the, the capabilities, the, the price per uh, flight hour, um, like it's it's battle readiness, which like it, it's literally setting world records in Ukraine, where some airframes have been able to fly seven times per day, which is insane is, considering the fact that this is um, just for viewers. This is Putin uh, cruising in Saudi Arabia, and you'll notice they all have Russian plates, which means like the Americans, they flew in all all of their vehicles beforehand, which is insane. Yeah. So you were saying it has uh, night fighting capabilities? Oh, it has all sorts of capabilities. <laughs> it's it's a very very advanced uh, platform, and it's a lot cheaper than let's say American super fighters such as the the unbeatable F thirty five. I mean, unbeatable in the sense that it falls from the sky before you get the chance to beat it at all. Uh, <laughs> so the, the the thing is. This thing, the Su-35, flew from the Krasnodar Krai to, which is the area in Russia, all the way to uh, the Dubai, essentially, and Abu Dhabi or the United Arab Emirates, which is around 2,500 kilometers, uh, without area refueling. With no, like it doesn't, it can't carry any additional fuel tanks. Just on its own fuel, it flew, and it was also armed, which means that there's like there's more um, air resistance carry, because of yeah. the missiles. Yeah, and, and weight that, to carry yeah. as well. And uh, it flew all the way to, to the United Arab Emirates with, along with Putin's um, passenger, I mean, the P Putin's Air Force One, if, we, if you want to call it that. Yeah. Uh, so it escorted it, the, the, the Putin's plane all the way there. And the interesting thing is uh, Azerbaijan, uh, Iran, and the UAE, gave the, the permission to Russian jets to fly in armed, which is very, very, you know, uncommon for countries to allow something like that, which is also a geopolitical message to all those who think Russia is isolated. Um, what countries did you say? Azerbaijan, Iran, and? And the UAE, not the Arab Emirates. Mm. Yeah, I mean... Realistically, the United Arab Emirates, for example, like lets Americans fly in armed all the time, I'm sure. But, yeah, but, but they didn't let Russians do that before, you know? Mm -hmm. And now it's mm -hmm. a very, very powerful message to the Yanks, I guess. Uh, speaking of messages, do you want to get into your uh, little drama? Yeah, sure, we can do that. All right, let me get uh, your uh, story here. There we go. So this is what I came across on uh, on your uh, Telegram. And do you want to clue people in so I don't spoil it or ruin it? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm sure some people have heard of this um, so-called um, independent fact checker called the NewsGuard, which is essentially a CIA front posing as an independent fact checker, uh, fact checker as all independent fact checkers do, essentially. Um, and there was this uh, very, very uh, prominent uh, Bangladeshi uh, news uh, outlet called the Weekly Blitz, which has been reposting my articles regularly for months now, and um, actually for over a year. Um, and what happened is that NewsGuard uh, contacted the editor-in-chief, Mr. Salahuddin uh, Chaudhry, uh, and they essentially threatened him if he continues publishing my stuff. Um, and the specific story that they were triggered by is the one where I 
pointed out that pregnant women are being drafted or conscripted into the Ukrainian military. So uh, this is very telling, I guess. And what uh, Mr. Chaudhry did is he sent him off to a certain place and uh, then wrote an article about it, uh, how he's being threatened. And, you know, he said that he's going to continue posting my stuff. And I just wanted to, you know, point it out. Um, you know, to be honest, I'm not, you know, agitated or anything. It's even sort of like a badge of honor that these guys are going after me because um, uh, it means that I'm, I'm hitting the, the right spot. Yeah, definitely. The As they say, the flack is the heaviest when you're over the target. Um, let me get another one of these uh, screenshots up in the background. Uh, for people who are interested, they can, like... Uh, pause and read through um yeah it's also yeah. on my telegram channel so whoever is uh, like uh, gets the chance to to see the channel they can also read the original um yeah post um the link will be in the description to drago's channel as well as a link to everything else including the patreon and uh, my channels i'm on twitter too as well and are, are you a user of rumble if you're on Rumble, find me on Rumble. Subscribe. If I get 100 subscribers, I might upload something. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is NewsGuard. We've got another four or five articles. How are we doing for time? 20 minutes in. Not bad. How F-16s for Kiev regime could spark a wider NATO-Russia war? Yeah. Um, well, the, this is this actually uh, it ties into what we talked about the modernization. Um, well, it's not just that. The thing is, they can't really cut these to pieces like they did with the Polish MiG 29s and you know send them with trucks. Uh, these are very, very you know um, delicate machines which uh, are not as robust as Soviet era jets. So they will have to fly from Romania, Slovakia, or Poland. Uh, or even Bulgaria, which is building its own uh, air bases for the F-16s that they're buying from the U.S., which they're not overpaying at all, by the way. But that's not a topic. Um, of course so uh, essentially what's happening is if these jets fly from a NATO airfield to Ukraine, how are the Russians going to react? I mean, are they just going to let armed F-16s to fly from NATO countries into, into Ukraine and then be used against the Russian military? That's a very, you know, that's a million dollar question or, or a billion dollar question, if you want, um, how the Russians will react. Because the, the Russians have said that they, they will consider it legitimate for them to target airfields which are used for such flights, that, which means that they would target airfields in NATO countries. So that could spark a wider war if the U.S. goes, uh, goes on with the plan. So we'll see what happens. Let's hope it doesn't come to the end of the world. Uh, time for this gift to come up. Keep calm and wait for <laughs> Russians. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, we haven't touched on Gaza. We'll get to Gaza in the meme section. Let's stick to uh, the Russians. The Russians. The Kremlin. Russians. <laughs> Those evil Muslim killing Serbs from the 90s are back. Helping the evil Russians. <laughs> genocidal Serbs and yeah, genocidal is, Russians. Uh, oh, do you know what I found out yeah. recently? Hold on, let's go full screen. You know what I found out recently? Like, I talked to John Bosnich, who's vaguely related to you. And, uh, yeah. and uh, what's it called? He was telling me that the UN definition of genocide is a relocation of three or more people. Um... <laughs> <laughs> like that's the new definition of genocide <laughs> so <laughs> what can i say so, i'm I, i'm i'm genocidal <laughs> i i've genocided <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it's all genocidal uh, maniacs and victims at the same time so <laughs> exactly victims of genocide i've been genocided multiple times <laughs> like what <laughs> Okay. Oh, God forbid if you're like a, a real estate owner who has uh, tenants like that, you 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 should be court martialed, I guess. Um, firing squad, man. If you if you've let go of tenants, if you, if you've let go of tenants because they've uh, they they they've been bad tenants or haven't paid, 
Definitely genocidal. Should be fire squatted. Yeah. Off the Hague with you, man. <laughs> the Hague doesn't exist, man. It's a it's a fake uh, imagination. Im- Im- imagination. It's a place in people's imagination where only Serbs can go, and some Africans yeah. too. Um, you know the uh, Americans. Ritter is famous for saying that that uh, you know the, the Americans uh, have this uh, the Hague clause. Where oh yeah, if, you've said it also as well. But Ritter uh, brought my attention to it a long time ago. In any case, Serbia and Russia are friends. Wink, wink. Yeah, uh, you know the, the <laughs> thing is like uh, this was actually claimed by a prominent Russian military analyst, uh, Igor Korchenko, who claims that Serbia helped Russia in this way. Um, what I did in in this article, I sort of kind of debunked it a little bit, I guess, uh, because, you know, it's a, a bit funny that a country like Russia needs Serbian help. Um, on the other hand, uh, what really happened is we helped ourselves. Like, we aided our own efforts to remain a relatively independent country, uh, as as crazy as that sounds. I mean, we are miles ahead in independence in comparison to other countries, uh, former Yugoslavia. I'm not saying oh, that okay. we're... Oh, okay, I... I, I... Until you said former Yugoslavia, I was going to disagree. But within the former Yugoslavia, yeah, man, miles ahead of other of other um, yeah. victims. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, at least we're not like a complete satellite state. I, we can take pride in that, considering the fact how powerful the 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 ones who are trying to turn us into one are. So we're, we're uh, like what a, I we're like an we're like a planet stuck in between three or four different orbits <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that like nobody has full control over, but we don't either. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. But, but, but because there are three planets pulling, we have sort of like a inadvertent independence, you could say. <laughs> so, um, the, 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 the thing is like, we can get weapons from countries, uh, like China or Cyprus in this case, and specifically Russian, weapons from Cyprus um, or other countries, uh, which isn't something that, you know, let's say countries like Croatia are allowed to do because they have to buy old American Cold War era junk for a lot of money and then, you know, like continue paying for that uh, in the foreseeable future. So, or non-foreseeable, well, the worst part, I guess. Um, so uh, the, the thing is, we bought these helicopters uh, from Cyprus, which couldn't actually maintain them because of the sanctions. They couldn't get any Russian spare parts because the EU is met, you know, is simply banning them from, from doing that. So now we got them for a relatively you know, reasonable fr- uh, price. And also we sold some of our equipment to the uh, uh, Cypriots, specifically the B-52 Nora uh, self-propelled guns, and this Artillery, is a good basically, yeah. job for us. Yeah, this is a good job for us because uh, essentially we're going to be, you know, uh, supplying them with um, maintenance, maintenance, and weapons and and ammunition for for this uh, for these uh, guns uh, for in, in several in the next several decades, which is good for our industry. Um, and we also get these, these helicopters, which are not exactly the newest, but we will do the modernization, which is also good for our industry. And essentially, it's a good deal for us. And on the other hand, the Russians don't have to deal with these helicopters because the NATO would have pushed Cyprus to get them to the Ukrainians. So in a way, this is like a win-win-win deal because nobody is losing anything. And also, the Ukrainians who will be flying in these helicopters are going to stay alive, or at least they will not (laughs) die in these helicopters. So it's good for everyone, I guess. Yeah. No comment. Um, people might have seen uh, the political cartoon Global Times um, sent in by a subscriber. Oh, yeah. Most of the memes that we're going to see uh, today are sent in by subscribers. Other than that one that was created by a YouTube ad and is going to become a meme. By the way, I'm on Instagram too. Lots more memes there. Um, that is the meme central. Uh, America. America and Venezuela. Esquibo. Esquibo. Yeah. Esquibo. Esquibo. I'm, I'm probably going to butcher the pronunciation. I'm also not sure how to pronounce the name of this uh, area. I mean, some call it province of Guyana, but to, to be honest, I, I, I don't see how something that, you know, comprises 70% of your 
territory could be province. <laughs> you know, I guess that would be the territory and then the rest of it would be a province. So uh, either way, uh, this is like an, like an ongoing uh, issue now that is actually reactivated after over 100 years, actually even 130 years, I guess, uh, because this area was colonized by the UK. Yeah, I know people are probably shocked by it, but anyway. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the thing is, Venezuelans want this territory back now that they're strong enough. Uh, but the, what I argued in this article is that they should thread carefully because, uh, you know, the Americans now are desperate for, for a win and Venezuela is very close to the U.S. So in case they, they needed like a casus belly to attack Venezuela, uh, I guess this would be a perfect excuse where they would say, oh, Venezuela is, you know, um, invading this small country and we have to protect it, right? Because the Americans just love protecting other countries. So uh, this is kind of like a repeat of what happened in Kuwait in 1991 when the Iraqi military took the, the country. Um, and then the Americans like told them before this, they told them, well, we don't care, you know, like it's, it's like an inter-Arab conflict. We don't care about that. And just a week later, they launched the Operation Storm uh, Shield and then the Desert Storm, uh, Desert Shield and Desert Storm in 1919, 1991, and attacked Iraq, which was then used as an excuse to for all the bombings and invasions of Iraq uh, over the next three decades. So um, I, I guess the Venezuelans should really be careful about this. Um, but that would mean that Venezuela's Maduro is like Saddam's, uh, like Iraq Saddam, which would mean that he's an agent of the CIA. Well, I mean, I'm not implying that. I'm just saying that <laughs> whatever he's doing now, I understand that he has like a dimension, certain dimension that he wants to do something before the elections, which would like give more support to him. And, and also they had this referendum about this. Um, and there's also like the economic aspect where Venezuela has a lot of oil, but because of the sanctions, they can't modernize their oil industry. So they can't really extract a lot of oil. Uh, but the thing is, this area, this is sweet as actually has a lot of oil as well. But this uh, the oil industry in the area is highly modernized because the Axon Mobil actually invests a lot of money there. So if they take this area, they're going to get, you know, the, the best equipment available uh, to extract oil, which can then be used in other parts of Venezuela as well. So or at least they can copy it in industrially and, and just use it. Uh, so, you know, there, there might be economic interest for Venezuela in, you know, launching an operation like that. Um, I want to get back to uh, Putin's visit to uh, the Middle East, because he didn't just go to Dubai. He went to Abu Dhabi. He went to, where else did he go? Riyadh? Uh, Saudi Arabia, I believe. In Riyadh. And he also yeah, went to Tehran. Iran, in Tehran, if I'm not mistaken, as well. And at the sa on the same day, President Raisi was in uh, Moscow. The Iranian president visited Moscow, which is interesting that they would like switch places like that. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. you're safe there and I'll be safe over here. Trust me. <laughs> you know that's what it seemed like so yeah i just wanted to play some video because we've got like a very elaborate joke here that we have lined up uh drago and i so this is how uh putin was welcomed to the emirates let's just call it the emirates um to all my arab friends who are also subscribers um i told you <laughs> like 10 years ago when I was saying Putin is the good guy everybody was like no Al Qaeda are the good guys <laughs> yeah. so yeah um, what do you have to say about this uh, message that was sent Oh, I mean, the Russian isolation is everywhere, man. Like, I don't see any Russian flags in the sky, and uh, <laughs> I just not going to uh, the Emirates at all, and uh, no Russian armed Russian jets flying over the country at all. And I see that the German uh, president was uh, welcomed with open arms, with a bit of a delay, but still. 
Um, yeah, we've got that video lined up as well. Um, you know what's funny? Wait, let me pause this. Can I pause this and then go back a bit? And then can we see what kind of planes these are? Because it'd be fucking hilarious if these are American planes. And I think they are. I think these are like F4 Phantoms or something like that. Like the, the, the like... Guy, uh, I'm not sure if you can't really see it because I'm too far away from the screen, but I, yeah, I, I'm yeah. going to show it later. And it's, uh, it's, it's Emirati, it's the Emirati uh, acrobatics team, I'm guessing. You know what I mean? And they're like 99.999% yeah, yeah, yeah. flying American planes that are drawing yeah. a Russian flag. <laughs> While Russian heavily armed SU-35s are flying into the country. Very, yeah. very Yeah. Um, and meanwhile, uh, I think if I click here next, there we go. This is the German president's uh, um, arrival in Qatar about two weeks ago or something like that. And like uh, nobody, like nobody was there. Literally nobody yeah. was there. Like not not like somebody came, but like no, <laughs> nobody came for like half an hour. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's the Baltic Steinmeier wasn't uh, greeted properly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's hilarious. I don't know what to say. Um, all right, uh, shall we get back to articles or shall we do some more memes? This is not quite a meme, but it's it's basically a meme. They've been a meme since the beginning. Nafo has left the chat. Um, on mass apparently. I don't know because you know I don't follow them, but um, other channels on uh, Telegram have posted that in there's like a mass exodus of NAFO um, for personal reasons. <laughs> uh, this uh, is the new NAFO winter uh, collection. What'd you oh, say? Yeah. Uh, I, I said it, I guess it has nothing to do with the Russian failures in the SML, right? The Russians are constantly failing forward. As yeah. uh, as as is how I can put it when he was reading and one of those Washington Post articles. You know, uh, you know, NATO guys to just leave because they realize that you know whoever is left, they can just beat the Russians anytime. Obviously, obviously. Uh, hold on, I'm clicking around here. Uh, let me see where the articles are. There we go. We've got Avdivka. Are the Russians going to fail in Avdivka too? Yeah, yeah, they're failing all the time, and this is going to happen in the, in the Avdeka as well. So, I mean, uh, what I actually wrote about in this article is that it makes no sense to expect the Russians to just storm in Avdeka and just, you know, lose 10,000 guys for no reason. What they're doing, like, they're going slow, and they're just pounding the, defender, the defenders with uh, drones, artillery, and aviation, especially those new guided bombs that they have. Um, mm -hmm. And cluster munitions as well. So, like, I mean, why would they just move in and die in, in, in droves when they can just, you know, uh, pound them and uh, block them and, you know, just uh, get them to surrender? Because the Russians are not in, in, in no hurry at all. The the West is. Um, I heard rumors that there's not going to be any talks of peace until after the U.S. election. So we'll see how that pans out. But yep. uh, Washington Post. Ta tacitly, Ta tacitly, Tac yeah. tacitly. I think that's how you pronounce it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Admits Kiev regime is losing. Yeah, this is basically Russian propaganda, as we know. Washington Post, <laughs> old, uh, Russian uh, government outlets financed by the Russian government and the evil Kremlin, especially the bloodthirsty Putin. So, I guess I'm not sure if we should even talk about it, given that it's all Russian propaganda, right? <laughs> I don't um, know, man. This uh, video could get taken down. That was the wrong prompt. Where is... There we go. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here and you made it this far. I don't have the graphic. I got to get that graphic. 50% um, of you I saw on my... Not not even 50. It's like 53. Like there's more of you that are not subscribed that are watching this than those of you that are subscribed. I don't get it. Why? Why? It's like just there. <laughs> like... Um, look, if you click, I promise in the future, we'll get you some good memes. In the meantime, this was sent in by a uh, subscriber. Oh, you can't see it. The top one's USA and the bottom one's the United Kingdom. Um, do you get it? 
The United Kingdom has no queen. Yep. <laughs> and the USA has no castles. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> it's a chess joke, man. <laughs> what can I say? Um, we try hard. Uh, that was sent in by a subscriber. We'll just leave it at that. I can't remember who sent what in because I just saved them all really quickly. Um, only Russia's victory ensures an end to NATO's brutal exploitation of Ukraine. Brutal exploitation? Yeah. They're helping them fight for peace and democracy, man. Yeah, don't yeah I really wish? don't know what came over me and I wrote that. I really don't know what happened. Uh, I brought, was probably drunk or something. Um, I, like, like in all seriousness, what I mentioned here is that the Kiev regime is now doing another favor to the Ukrainian people. They're going to be moving in um chemical waste from the u.s and they've allocated 400 kilometers uh square kilometers for this purpose to enrich the ukrainian soil um with all these uh, all this democratic waste uh so i guess you know like it, it, at this point it's really insane uh, to which extent the ukraine is being sold out to these corporations and you know the crazy part for me is that uh, all, all these Ukrainians were ready to rebel against Yanukovych, who was actually the last sovereign leader of Ukraine, but they're not, not, not ready to go against the government, which has literally sold their country into oblivion. Like, like they've sold the country to corporations, which, and, and Zelensky was openly talking about the possibility of having corporations run entire regions. Like the country would be split into regions and each corporation would get the chance to control um, uh, each region and do whatever they want with it. So, like, if that doesn't spell colonization, I don't know what does. And at, at this point... I think point, you mispronounce like, Soros. I think you mispronounce Soros. Uh, oh, yeah, I say Soros because, like, his no, no. last name you, is... No, no, you say, no, no, you said Zelensky. But like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, sorry, yeah, yeah, cutting up the country. But I was just trying to be funny. But like, it sounds like oh, yeah. Soros is like giving off like sections to countries, yeah, I yeah. Mean, to corporations. Right, right, right. Uh, it's, it, that's essentially what's what's happening. Like the the son of Mr. Soros is actually the one who has um, you know wanted to make this deal with Zelensky. I mean, make the deal. Otherwise, uh, in other words, tell him what to do. Um, and accept the deal and uh he did that like he actually accepted the deal as far as i know uh it's yet to be official but that's what they're saying through the grapevine so uh either way ukraine is being sold out to people who are well i'm not sure if we, we should talk about the you know the movie that got banned you know the sound of freedom well oh, um you the, know the what's happening people. to ukraine yeah yeah you you know what's happening to um, people under age 18 in Ukraine, mm. as they would say, and uh, how they're being uh, sent off to Western and other countries to do all sorts of legal stuff. And yeah, uh, yeah. so th that's, you know, that's happening now. Like they took their wives and children and they've sent them off to die fighting, a, you know, a global superpower in a war they can't win. And now they're also like putting waste in their country. So like, if that doesn't push you to rebel against the government that's doing that, I don't know what will. Um, that was too sober. We need a meme. This is Erdogan <laughs> getting his x-ray. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I wrote about that. Like. Like he's a walking hypo hypocrisy, man. Like it's uh, it's just funny at this point. We've got the winner of the meme contest, definitely. Um, meme of the Gaza conflict coming up. But uh, first, do you have anything to say that uh, you might have not covered or want to draw attention to before we close this up? Yeah, the the one where we talked about, where I mentioned I want to talk about the Washington Post. Uh, I, I advise people to read it and to see how hilarious it, it is where Ukrainian soldiers themselves are actually debunking all the propaganda myths about Russia losing when they're talking about Russia. You know, there's one soldier who, who said like, oh, we thought when the counteroffensive started, 
we thought it's all going to be over in two days. Well, it was just not the way they <laughs> thought it would be. <laughs> uh, excellent. Uh, go find Drago's article and read it. In the meantime, what you see and what she sees. <laughs> <laughs> For those that don't know, this is, uh, I think her handle is Gun Waifu or something like that. Israeli yep. uh, only Her fans. real name is um, Natalia Fadev, I think. It's for, uh, that's what I've seen so far in the source. Is not sure. I'm not sure 100% that's her real name, but that's what the sources are implying. Um, she's uh, only fans for the Israeli army. Let's just leave it at that. Drago, thank you for stopping by. Everybody who's uh, stuck around to the end, thank you. Do this, get rid of her ugly face. And uh, everyone, have a good day, weekend, afternoon, night, whatever it is when you're watching this. See you later.